Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zillotech, and today Apple released iOS 26.0.1 to the public. iOS 26.0.1 is available around the world at the same time for everyone on all iOS 26 supported devices. If you wanted to install the update, you can do it by going into your settings, going down to general, and then software update. If you're not seeing it still, swipe back, go to software update, and you should see it there. However, if you're on iOS 26.1 betas, you won't have an update as you're on a newer version. So if you are a beta tester or developer, you'll need to use a computer to downgrade if you want the current public version. Now this came in at a pretty small 838.9 megabytes on my iPhone Air, and it was about under one gigabyte on all the devices we have here. Along with this, Apple also released many other updates, iPadOS 26.0.1, macOS 26.0.1, along with tvOS and HomePodOS 26.0.1, VisionOS 26.0.1, watchOS 26.0.2, and older updates for iOS 18.7.1 and others. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go into settings, go to general, then about. And as you can see, the build number is 23A355. This is an important bug fix and security update, and the first thing they've updated has to do with the modem. They've updated the modem in all the devices, it seems, so hopefully that helps with overall connectivity, and it should. So this update is more about bug fixes and security updates, where the feature update is expected with iOS 26.1. However, the first thing they've fixed, again, has to do with cellular network connectivity. So people upgrading to iOS 26 could have had issues with cellular network connectivity. I've heard from many of you that had the issue. However, Apple says it's a small amount of users. So whether that's on an iPhone 16 Pro Max, an older iPhone 12 Pro Max, or anything else, this should hopefully resolve those issues. They've also said they've fixed specific issues with the iPhone 17, 17 Air, 17 Pro, and 17 Pro Max, where when you're taking photos under certain lighting conditions, so taking them under certain lighting, whether that's maybe bright light or dark light, you could have artifacts in the photos. Those should be resolved this time around. Also a complaint since the introduction of iOS 26 is app icons disappearing. More specifically, when you're on clear icons, sometimes you'll see they just filled in here, but it should resolve the issue now and they should no longer disappear and they should show properly. So this is something they fixed again on all iOS 26 supported devices. So they're saying when you're adding a custom tint, but many people have seen it when they're on maybe just clear icons as well. So tinted icons, whether you're using the case tinted icons or maybe just your own custom icons, it should then fix this. So that's something that should be resolved and hopefully is fixed. So let me know if you're seeing that as well. Apple says it should be resolved though. Another thing that Apple has fixed in this update has to do with accessibility. If you're someone that uses VoiceOver and you installed iOS 26 only to find out that it was disabled and you couldn't use it, this has been resolved in iOS 26.0.1. So it's great to see that, and that's what they've fixed in this update. Now there could be other fixes they haven't mentioned anymore specifically. However, one other thing I wanted to mention is if we go into our settings, go to display and brightness, they still haven't updated the wallpaper to reflect iOS 26. So this is something that typically gets updated with the first point one update, 26.1, but it's just odd that we haven't had that yet, and it's a small oversight as they continue to resolve bugs. Now, as far as security updates, let's go ahead and take a look at those. We'll go into Safari. And on Apple's security release website, I'll link it in the description, but if we scroll down, you'll see all the updates from today. iOS 26.0.1, iOS 18.7.1, older versions of macOS as well, but if we go into this, you'll find we only have one security update. Now this must have been major enough that they pushed out updates to everything, but you'll see it's for font parser. So it says the impact is processing a maliciously crafted font may lead to unexpected app termination or corrupt process memory. To fix it, the description is an out of bounds write issue was addressed with improved bounds checking. So that's the only thing that's listed here. It doesn't mean there's not additional security updates, but that's the only thing that they've actually listed here. Another thing Apple announced today a few hours ago says that Apple's foundation models framework unlocks new app experiences powered by Apple intelligence. They haven't talked about Apple intelligence for some time, and it looks like they're talking about it again and how it's being utilized by third party developers. So things such as health and fitness experiences, you can see as we scroll down journaling apps, other apps as well as we continue to scroll down and more for education apps. So I'll link this in the description if you want to check it out, but hopefully we see that new updated Siri probably in early next year, but that's what we're waiting for as far as Apple intelligence and of course for it to roll out to more locations. 
Now, as far as releases, we're waiting for iOS 26.1 beta 2 with some new features, and we may see that as soon as tomorrow. Now, typically in years past with iOS 18.1 beta 1 to beta 2, it was a one week wait. However, in years prior to that with iOS 16 and iOS 17.1 beta 1, it took one week to have the next update. So we could see it as soon as this coming week or possibly next week. Either way, we should expect a few new features in that, some changes, and we've seen some big improvements with it so far. Now, if you're wondering if you should install iOS 26.0.1, well, initial feedback after those have just installed it and tried it out, including myself, is that it's quite good. It seems like it's going to fix a lot of performance issues we'll talk about in a moment, as well as the bugs I already mentioned. So it's a must have for iOS 17, and the security update was important enough that they pushed it to older devices as well with 18.7.1. So I would highly recommend you install this. If you're on iOS 26.1, I wouldn't worry about it, and hopefully we'll see a new beta with that. That soon, but 26 to 26.0.1 is a must at this point. When it comes to performance, well, so far it's good. I showed you that it filled in some of the app icons, but overall feels very smooth, snappy overall, and things such as ProMotion are much smoother this time around. So you'll see as I scroll up and down, it just seems very smooth as far as the overall experience. So it seems like this will continue to be the trend. Hopefully it fixes it on older devices since we had basically on iPhone 15 and older, some people saying that lag is really bad. So hopefully it resolves that and they've fixed it in this update, but it'll take a few days to know that and we'll talk about that in the weekend follow-up. Now, as far as the initial heat, when you install an update, it's going to use the processor a lot. It's going to heat the device up, but it cooled down fairly quickly. I think Apple's really been focusing on thermal management lately, but let's go ahead and take a look as we run benchmarks. So we'll go ahead and run benchmarks here. We'll run them on both devices here. So we'll run benchmarks and then we'll take a look at the thermals when we're about halfway done. So we're about halfway done. I just thought you'd wanna see the thermals before we measure them. This is the iPhone Air, so a lot of heat on the front of the phone at the top where the processor is. 16 Pro Max is concentrated on the left-hand side if you're looking at the screen. And the iPhone 17 Pro here is actually dissipating heat a lot differently as you can see as it spreads it out. Let's go ahead and flip these over and take a look at the thermal numbers. So as we take a look at the thermals, right where the processor is here on the iPhone Air, we're at about 42 degrees Celsius on the iPhone 16 Pro Max. We're at about 40 degrees Celsius. And on the 17 Pro, you can see it dissipates heat nicely. And we're at about 36 degrees Celsius in the hottest point. So at the hottest point, as it's spreading out the heat, it's only 36 degrees. So much better thermals in the 17 pro series. Let's go ahead and wait for benchmarks to complete. And we'll take a look. Benchmarks completed, and this is the first time I've run them on this version. And you'll see on the left, we have an iPhone 17 Pro in the middle, iPhone 16 Pro Max, and on the right, the iPhone Air. So this gives you an idea of overall benchmarks. If we compare them to what we had before, it's actually a little bit higher than on iOS 26 that I was running before. So 3,590 for single core, 9,198 for multi-core. And that's before it's actually finished doing everything in the background. So overall, I'd say it's pretty decent, well within the margin of error and I would expect it to improve over the next few days, and we'll check it in the weekend follow-up. When it comes to battery life, if we go home, take a look at it, I was actually pretty impressed with battery life on this version with the iPhone Air. I started using it a couple days ago as my main device as I'm testing it out for a full review. I like to use them for a full week like I did with the 17 Pro Max, but if we take a look at battery, you'll see... Battery health, of course, only has seven cycles at this point with 100% capacity. And if we take a look at battery usage, you'll see yesterday was three hours and 34 minutes of screen active time, one hour and 43 minutes of screen idle time with 71% usage. This is actually better than my 16 Pro Max was for me. The day before that, four hours and 27 minutes of active time, 87% usage. Today, two hours and 34 with 50% usage. So five hours, maybe six hours, depending on how you use it. Again, it's still actually setting everything up, so we'll have to check it in a few days. Now, as far as storage, let's go ahead and take a look under general and then iPhone storage, just to take a look at see how much it's actually using. We'll take a look on the 16 Pro Max as well. Scroll to the bottom and you'll see we're taking up 19.89 gigabytes on the iPhone Air. 
total for iOS. And then Apple intelligence is 6.24 gigabytes and 13.65 for iOS, actually a little bit less than the 16 pro max for some reason. So not sure why it could be Apple intelligence models or something else, but around 20 gigabytes or so, and then system data varies up and down. So I really wouldn't pay attention to that unless maybe you can't install apps, but this will go up and down from eight gigabytes to 20 gigabytes back down to two gigabytes. It just varies depending on how you're using it. And so that's everything with iOS 26.0.1, the first major bug fix and security update. Definitely a must update. Let me know what you think of it though in the comments below and how it's performing for you, especially on older devices. I'd love to hear from you as well. And of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.